Um, and the last talk will be by me, presented by me. So, yeah, as you know already, my name is Alexandra, and I work as a software engineer in the search core team for more than four years already. Before I um, will continue, so I want to share a story with you. So, have someone of you read a short novel, um, Scruggled? Someone? No? Okay. <laughs> so, 10 years ago, in 2007, there was a short novel published uh, about future, so-called dark future, when the Google actually has um, a lot of power and he has a lot of profiles on each user, which is actually <laughs> future as now. Uh, and um, uh, Google still couldn't uh, share this information with someone else, with government or someone, but uh, there was a law that allows Google to share information about your search history and about your ads. And the novel was about the guy who came from the holidays and uh, in the airport there was like questions from the government like, why on that day you saw that ad about weapon? So um, I just want to um, emphasize that not only your uh, browser's history, but only your search uh, queries and your ads you see based on your search queries are dangerous because they can reveal a lot of information about you. So um, we actually um, decided to create a search engine and um, yeah, you might ask uh, why. Because we want to change the internet. As you already heard a lot here, your um, uh, behavior is tracked and your data is collected almost by everyone. So um, many pages have a lot of trackers embedded on it and almost every company creates a data profile on you. So why are they creating those data profiles? because they want to sell you more ads. And uh, those ads usually uh, depend, uh, depends, depend on your data, uh, on your profile. And what is more important, um, they want to change your behavior. So you might ask um, how they can change my behavior. I mean, I don't share anything with them. But as you already heard uh, from your whole um, uh, profile, you can reveal a lot of information, not only uh, information you open, uh, share like, I don't know, your age, your gender, etc., but also a lot of private information such as medical history, your sexual fantasies, like your fears. And I want to just ask you a simple question. So let's say that some company knows that you have fear um, of refugees, I don't know. And then um, you see uh, some ads on news about Merkel allowing a lot of refugees coming to the Germany. So if you see this information, will this change your um, opinion on the next election or not? And you can basically apply this approach like a little bit wider. So they can actually change your behavior and they do this already now. The last scandal with this Cambridge Analytics, this is an example of it. So we want to have a search engine which respects you. Search engine doesn't need to have a data profile on you to serve you. And basically we can serve you even personalized results just uh, giving the making the calculation on the client side. So how we build the search engine, how we build our index? We build it based on the query vectors. So the query vectors can be seen as this structure. To each query, there is a set of URLs with some counters. And those counters are how many times other people clicked on that URLs while searching for something. So I think Alexandra already told you before that we're using that wisdom of crowd. So we are trying to analyze, we get this data from other users. So what are the most popular search engines, uh, most popular answers? And then we just applying simple statistic and by uh, selecting the most popular URL, you can already answer a lot of queries. 
And in our index, we have two types of queries. So we have known queries, and as I already told, you can just apply simple statistic plus a lot of additional ranking factors to boost the results. So it might be like language of the user and language of the page, country, um, engagement of the user on the page, etc. We build our index up front. It means that we collect all data and we build index. So during the searching, uh, uh, we basically need only read operation. So that's why we are using this specific key value store, uh, which is called Kiwi. And this library was created in clicks by one of our coworkers, and it's open source. You can check it on the GitHub. Um, this um, um, so this key, uh, key value uh, uh, store is optimized for our needs because it's optimized for the reading. So it doesn't allow you to write, it's just for the reading. And um, that's why it provides you very fast access to the needed key. And then we have a um, big bunch of unknown queries. It's around 25% of um, all queries we receive. So those queries which are not in our index. So how we tackle those? Um, we built, um, where, uh, so we built um, vector space from all queries we have in our index, and then uh, for the given query we convert it into that vector space. It's very, very dense space, so you can imagine you take all corpus of the words, and then you have like your vector, which if um, a word in the vector, you basically put one, otherwise it's zero. So the vector is very sparse. And then by applying some similarity metrics, you're trying to find out what are the similar qu uh, queries to the given one. So basically, if you are searching like, what is the distance to the moon? So that might be similar like, um, what is the distance to the star or etc. So because it finds out that those uh, queries are similar. And for this, we're also using um, uh, one uh, specific library, which was implemented also by one of our coworkers. Uh, it's called Grain, and um, it's using the uh, near neighbors algorithm to find out those uh, similar queries in the, um, the whole um, multidimensional space. So, a little bit of our numbers. Currently, we have six, around six terabytes of compiled data. So. And you can imagine that the raw data is much, much, much bigger. And you already saw that we uh, serve your results while typing. So that's why our algorithm should be very fast, because um, with each character, we should receive immediately, uh, return immediately results. So what hardware are we using to provide this? Uh, in our current infrastructure, with actually, which is changing <laughs> pretty often, uh, we have three types of the servers. So we have two data servers. Uh, one holds Kiwi data and one holds grain data. They uh, are yeah, memory mapped, so that's why uh, the instances should be memory optimized. And then we have the search server. It's just lightweight HTTP server and all the magic, all ranking, uh, everything happens there. It just connects to the both data servers to uh, get the data and then processing. So this server is um, uh, compute intensive, so that's why we select special instances on the AWS. So we hosting our, um, yeah, our cluster on the Amazon infrastructure. So, what do you think, how many servers we need to process um, all the requests we're receiving now, which is um, like for a couple of hundreds of thousands uh, users? We need only three servers, and especially the one, uh, three I explained to you before. So we need one search, one data, and one CMQ. So uh, in this infrastructure is also um, very, good extendable, basically. So if you want to uh, increase your concurrency 10 times more to this number, you need only seven servers. So two of the data, two of the CMQ, and three search, because basically this is our uh, incoming server which receives all requests. And this is equivalent to the millions of daily active users. So, um, 
in our search, we are constantly changing things because um, uh, to find out the URLs for the given query, it's not a problem. Our recall is very big. Usually when you search for something, you will receive hundreds of URLs which might be relevant to you. So the main problem of search is not to find out uh, some URLs, is to find out one, two, or three maybe uh, the most relevant URLs for you. So this is the problem where we're working constantly. So we uh, we given you good results but there are still a lot of improvements so we still can uh, find out um, yeah, better algorithms. And um, yeah, and then the another thing uh, that we worked on that we wanted to have also personalized results but they should be with that privacy aspect. And uh, as I already told, we are doing this by moving calculations to the uh, client side uh, and respecting the privacy of the user. Uh, other uh, search engines usually do this by creating data profiles on users, as you already know, but in our case, we can do this just by shifting this to the client. So um, we have a lot of open topics, of course. So first thing which we are trying now, it's kind of on the beta, but um, we have now also our search result page. Um, first, we tried to like to provide the user with the most relevant three, four, five results. But then we saw that sometimes it's not enough. Sometimes, especially when it's not navigational query, when you want to go to some specific uh, um, site, you want to have some opinion. And in this case, you need to have more than three results to read uh, as much as possible. And basically, yeah, we started to provide uh, those results so you can access them directly through the uh, endpoint, through the URL, or you can use this um, search result page as a complementary uh, search in our Clicks browser. Then um, with um, evolving of search, um, so you can see that if you have more data, your code actually becomes simpler. Why? Because previously when uh, you used some I don't know, um, hand, uh, some algorithms, some specific um, parameters to boost some pages. Now you can just learn from the data you have to uh, use some data techniques. So we are now experimenting on the data, on the, on the three uh, ranked uh, algorithms to provide you better results. And the um, last thing I want to mention is that we try uh, to build a unified index for many countries. So currently, we are supporting these six countries, which means that um, you can select in the drop do uh, down where you're located and you will see the specific for you uh, sites. But um, we want to integrate more sites, so in the next batch, we will have those countries included, and then of course uh, we continue and continue including uh, more and more countries. And this brings also problems because you need to provide the user the most relevant URL and sometimes it might be a problem because, for example, in Switzerland people speak like three languages, there are three main languages, Italian, uh, German one, and French one. And uh, you need to um, pick up, you need to rank accordingly a lot of results to give the user exactly the one he wants. So um, that's all from my side. Uh, yeah, don't forget that the data actually belongs to you and you are paying with your data for free services of other search engines. But uh, you can choose between just sharing the data uh, in private matter or sharing the data with uh, privacy problems and yeah as you already hear a lot today um, it's not very <laughs> safe <laughs> thank you